All right, let's just uh, let's just jump into it. So this is a, a Grawl mid-range aggro deck, whatever whatever archetype you want to refer to it as, that is looking to leverage uh, the card Vivian's Arcbow a little bit to allow us to play a good deal of uh, resources in terms of ramp creatures and lands, but also convert those in the mid to late game um, <clears throat> into other threats. The arc bow also notably works well with the gods because when your opponent kills the god, it goes back into your deck and the arc bow can floop the pig right back out into play. Notably, even though this is a pig deck, it is not running cards like Galta, and that is intentional because Galta is hard to get out with arc bow, so we're playing more threats like these that have good stats that are decent to like put into play with pig, but at the same time um, <coughs> aren't quite... Uh, as unlikely to find with Arkbo. Notably, Crawl Harpooner here is a card that's also really good with the pig because pig puts it into play tapped and attacking and it gains the large bonus from creatures in your bin. Zurin, thanks for the six months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. A uh, little bit of column A, a little bit of column B Equinox. I really like Arkbo as a card, but people have also, also been donating for us to play it. We fell all the way down to 10. Let's see if we can make headway headway past that. Seven foil cards, no lands. So unfortunate. Seems like okay, but not amazing. Double double Domery's a little awkward. I'm going to bottom that. Definitely looking for lands and cheaper plays. Grixis discard was that from yesterday. No, it's a deck that's in the deck queue that'll be played at some point in the future. How do you spin? Hurry. Right, let's just kill this, I think. Uh, we peaked at like four yesterday, I think. If I if I recall correctly. I think the Bant deck is more powerful in terms of raw power level. Wow. Alright, so their hand's just really bad. Got it. Have a six six. I know the 6-6 six, six makes Domri a little bit awkward, but yeah, it's probably it's probably just a, a good beefer to put into play there. Alright, so Thrashing Brontodon is great against aggro. Um, I probably want Lava Coils as a way to be more interactive as well. This is likely a Harpooner matchup. Um, out. Domri's probably a little bit slow too. <clears throat> I'm going to trim one Arc Bow. In this matchup, we basically just want to kill their stuff and put put big beefcakes into play. And deck. Four, four toughness things on three. Six toughness things. You know, they're real, real, real good. Hey, Davids. Thank you for the brand new tier one sub. Happy Saturday. Hope you're having a great start to your weekend. <coughs> no, I don't like bringing in... I don't like bringing in Cinder Vines against Mono Red. I think just Brontodon's more than enough. Um, especially in a uh, mid-range deck like what we're playing that has a lot of threats in it. Like, some of the time you can just kill them, attack them through the Experimental Frenzy. <coughs> Morning, Dan in. Yeah, newer when we're when we're newer into the into the set, um, this hand really wants an untapped planet one, but I think it's keepable because it has two one mana plays. Uh, when we're newer into the set, I like to do some weekend streams. So if I could shock on one here, we'd probably be a strong favorite to win because I can't. We're gonna be in a little bit of a little bit of awkward, but <clears throat> I think it's definitely keepable. And watching your streams, decided to support you, but well, I appreciate it. Those, uh, those subs are definitely what keep me keep me here as often as I am. <clears throat> I definitely don't want to play out a second elf into a potential chain whirler here, so I'm just gonna play one and then probably shock something. Let's go ahead and kill their two two here. We'll take another two total from this and this. 
we get to curve this, 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 we should be in a very good spot. Uh, they don't, Captain Magar. That's why, that's why they're not good. Yeah, it looks like, uh, probably playing the Ben Stark variation, if I had to venture a guess. I'm gonna go ahead and block with my Brontodon here. Obviously, they could spend a Shock or a Lightning Strike to, like beat this instead of combat with first strike but like now i've gained five life basically and like that's one less shock that's going to be pointing at my rekindling phoenix or in this case a null hide ferox so just put put giant monsters into play someone earlier was asking a question about the bant bow deck and i think this is actually a card i want to try in that deck it just seems super super powerful chandra speaking of super powerful chandra is very good here uh, in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and attack her. I assume, yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't hit the land for the dragon there. Legion War Boss. Interesting. Alright, well, this is a pretty easy eat here. Null Hide Ferox making our Lava Coil a little bit awkward here. Um, yeah, Ferox not having Trample is a bit of a drag for sure. Yeah, Chandra's very good. They actually exiled another Chandra with her a second ago. I think I'm just playing these out and passing. They get hit by another chain whirler. We'll just like cry silently. So I think the plan here is. Well, the plan was haste dragon and then kill this, but that's no longer an option, so... Let's pay for this. And then lava coil this. And I think we're just gonna have to take eight off this Chandra here, which sucks, but... Pretty sure it is what it is. Feel my pain. I don't want to play this out, because I need these back as blockers here, ideally. Probably gonna see an attack with everything here. It's gonna be bad for you. Oh yeah, actually Blue Red Friends is supposed to be third. I put the stream title up wrong. If you look in the deck queue, it's in the right order there. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I like the full swing here on their part. Did Bant Bow eat Bant Flash over my website? Well, Bant Flash hasn't been up there because the Bant Flash deck we had from last season just isn't competitive anymore. So I ended up cutting it uh, a while ago. I added Bant Bow last night. Yeah, super dead. <laughs> Chandra is real scary. I don't really have better tools to beat a Chandra, huh? I guess maybe you could argue Collision Colossus kind of does that. Probably don't have time to screw around with Arcbow. Let's try... Let's try that. Leave one of these in. It's also, it's also possible Domri is good here. Just because he's a little bit of removal. It's kind of strange. Like, Legion War Boss was okay there, but it feels kind of strange that they boarded that in against my deck full of creatures. Maybe it's just in their main deck and they didn't board it out. I 
He's quite good as an alternative dummy left to play. You mean four mana dummy, right? Which version of Bant do I like more? I've been enjoying playing the bow version of Bant the most, but I don't know if it's actually better than the version playing Hydra Increases. <clears throat> uh, well, we're in match one, game three, Fulgrim. We just went live a few minutes ago. Yeah, so I'm saying I'm saying we managed to win a game. It's exactly correct. I think I'm gonna play this as a 4-4 and then play. Am I gonna play Land War Elves? I guess. I'm gonna get Chain Whirlered and be incredibly sad though. Maybe it's right to play Rekindling Phoenix because of the possibility of Chain Whirler this turn. He's dead. Easy block with the spellbreaker here if they attack. That's a good draw. And I think at this point, I just want to pivot ASAP. The last game was a good example of just, like, not being able to run down the Chandra, so I think if they are going to be going down that route, I want to wanna just pressure them. I'm going to see double, double removal on this. All right, sure. <clears throat> we had a land here. We'll close real quick with our two four fours. It's a good blocker here, too. <clears throat> Yep, yep, yep. Four. X4s. X4s are good against the red deck. <laughs> I played a lot of varying iterations of these green red decks. And uh, I think on average they tend to be favored against mono red. Like obviously not obviously not unlosable, but I think on average you'd rather be on the green red side of the table. Yeah, we're almost we're almost like one of those tryhard streams. Almost almost like one of those tryhard streams. It's a little speculative, but it's like pretty good if it hits a land. And if it doesn't hit a land, it like technically plays magic. I guess I guess maybe maybe if this is stomping ground I'm supposed to keep, and because it's not, I'm not. So either way. Prison rub by elf. Yep. Fair. Harsh, harsh, but fair. Maybe chat has gotten better at deck building recently. No, I've been playing decks that I don't think are as competitive off off the ladder. Is basically the the difference. Speculation not paying off. Got it. Uh, I believe the Karn means they're probably not on a Vivian-esque list. And honestly, I'm not quite sure how I want a sideboard. It's probably Shock out Lava Coil in. So they probably have slightly bigger threats. Although the fact that they have Planeswalkers makes me think that maybe the Shock could still be okay. Not exactly what I want to do. <clears throat> I mean, like, when we were, like, constantly in the percentages and really low, it's because I was just playing literally everything on the ladder because I didn't care. But ideal, ideally, I would prefer to hit top 1,000 every other month. So we've got a good start this month, so I'm going to stick to decks like this in the ladder. 
Should I have waited two more turns to see what they're playing? I, I don't, they're playing like they have mid range stuff. Uh, I think I'm supposed to mulligan that. Sand's fine. One of the nice things about bow is that even when you're a little bit flooded like this, bow turns your lanes into resources. Yeah, that's that's fair actually. They have all the they have uh they probably have a lot of enchantment removal. I don't know. I don't know that I like. I think people board in cinder vines way too aggressively. Um. <clears throat> Think uh, Bronzedon's probably probably an okay an okay play here. I wouldn't wouldn't hate that. Hopefully we don't get Knight of Autumns here. That would feel bad. That's the one thing that's awkward about Bow against the Mantex is they have Knight of Autumn and a lot of the time. Yep. Yikes. Like Prison Realm tier and regret not boarding in artifact and enchantment removal. Just a Jade Light deal. Meet my 6 6. He's a good guy. We can beat that card, right? Guess, guess we should like automatically board in Collision Colossus against uh, against Bantex, probably. That's probably a good because like Collision Colossus is like a card where like the floor on it is like relatively high. Like even even when it's bad, it's still pretty reasonable. Yeah, I think I think people overboard cards like Cinder Vines. Especially like seeing the feedback from chat, like people constantly want to board in Cinder Vines against like Mono Red and Mono Blue. Basically, any deck that has instance and sorceries in it, people seem to want to board in Cinder Vines against. Morning, get all. Uh, we dropped to number ten. It doesn't really matter what rank we are, so long as we're in the top thousand. There aren't there aren't extra there aren't extra cookies for for being number one versus being number one thousand. In fact, you could argue whoever finishes in one thousand is nine hundred ninety nine spots smarter than whoever finished in number one because they did less work and got the same prize. No, unmoored ego is the surgical extraction of standard, in the most, in like the most literal way possible. Mm, I guess I did have Kroll harpooners last game, huh? Those are still in my deck. Maybe that concession's a little premature. Forgot about uh, the Storkus. If we hit a if we hit a land here, we get to like turn three Hellkite them, which would be sick. Sultai. Um, I think I want to give this one one a one one counter against Sultai. Vivian's Dark Boat does not work with Galta's CMC reduction. Galta's, Galta's converted mana cost is still 12, regardless of how much mana you pay to cast it. Which is why, which is why there's no Galta's in our 75. Let's slow this down. That feels bad. So they're playing Bant with the Wild Growth Walker package then. That's an aggressive attack. Huh?
<sighs> so do I want to play this with haste and hit this? The problem is like, I don't feel like I can get super aggressive because they have wild growth walker, which probably means I'm just not going to be able to run them down. Okay, I want to kill the Tefri, Theo. Like the question is, it, do I kill the Tefri? The question is, how do I kill the Tefri? Just for people that aren't understanding the decision I'm trying to make. Uh, I should have attacked them with Paradise Druid, I think, here. I don't, I don't think I want to play this other... Do I? Yeah, I'm going to play the other one out. <clears throat> Let's just do both. Alright. So just can never win. Yes, please. Thank you. All right. God bless the opponent for giving us a chance. I appreciate you. It's never, ever in a million years going to beat a gain 12. But a gain 6, we might be able to punch through. Pass here. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna. It's probably gonna be our last ladder match with this deck. This feels feels a lot worse than the other green red planeswalker deck that we were playing. Uh, probably want collision colossus. Uh, probably want Brontodon. Gonna cut these arc bows since they have a bunch of Knights of Autumn. Um, probably want Lava Coil rather than Shock because it cuts through a Wild Growth Walker with one counter on it. I'm gonna trim a Null Hide since I'm bringing in a bunch of non-creature spells. So those cards, so Pinky, those cards both destroy artifacts, but they destroy artifacts in different ways. Also, I think if you're looking for a card that generates card advantage in this deck, you should probably just be playing a different deck. I think too many people fail to recognize their role and stay in their lane. So like, you don't beat the control decks by going long. You're not you're not gonna out card the Tefri Search for Azkanta deck by throwing a couple of adorable Vivian Reeds in your sideboard. You should you should instead try to kill. The Tefri, Vivi, the Tefri Search for Escanta deck by going under them. I feel like I, I feel like too many people fail to recognize their role, roles in matchups and they want their deck to do all of the things. The best sort of card advantage you can generate is killing your opponent with cards in their hand still. So why why would I want a card advantage through the life gain? Why wouldn't I like so if we think the life gain is a problem and lava coil is not enough, why wouldn't we play a card like say Tibalt to stop the life gain rather than trying to card advantage through it? Like, do you think a cop to like two copies of Vivian is gonna let me card advantage through like Karns and uh Hydrate Crisis out of the opponent? Again, I think that's failing to recognize your role in the matchup. Hey, Blue Amans. Thank you for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Why is why is flashing a creature irrelevant in my deck? Can you explain to me a situation where you where you think flashing in a creature is going to give me an advantage that I that I need? Like when when is it advantageous to give my large creatures flash? Like what am I what am I gaining? How am I what am I gaining by holding up the mana? I agree with you so far this deck feels kind of clunky and bad compared to the green red Sarkin deck that we were playing, but I don't think 
adding random Vivians is the right way to take it. I think I'd rather just be more aggressive, like the Green Red Star deck that we've played in the past. I mean, like, it's fine to play mid-range decks. In fact, like, these Bant decks that are doing really well are a great example of, like, true mid-range decks are very good in this format. I just think playing these Grohl colors as a mid-range strategy seems like a fundamental misunderstanding of, like, what your deck is supposed to be doing. And this deck, this deck as it's constructed, might not be very good as an aggressive deck, but if it's not good as, a, as an aggressive deck, I really don't feel like the answer is take these colors that aren't a good mid-range deck and try and force them into a mid-range role, right? The correct answer, in my opinion, is to build them as an, with an aggressive slant. And honestly, it feels like it really highlights part of the issue with the pig card, which is that the pig card is this top end that's not aggressive enough in a deck that's like looking to be aggressive, right? So like if you look at the other green red decks that have been successful so far this season, they're decks that um they're decks that allow you to really pressure the opponent and their five drops tend to have haste as opposed to having this like cute little tricky thing. Sure, but I'm saying you're going to have a harder time you're going to have a harder time with the control matchups if you're trying to rise up to beat them your win rate against control decks is going to be much better if you don't try and fight them on their axis don't don't turn your aggro deck into this awkward bad mid-range deck have your have your aggro deck lean into what's really what it's good at doing trying to actually end the game Pig, I agree. It's also embarrassing against Tefri. Non-haste non 5 mana threat that gets bounced your hand and you draw a card is not good. Kind of, uh, kind of an awkward spot in the format overall. We're going to try and slog through this, so we'll probably, probably head to a queue after this rather than play against these decks that are just stuffing us on the ladder. Land's actually not a terrible draw here because it means I get to go Brontodon into plus Dom Rekindling Phoenix. It did feel a little bit bad earlier that I ended up running Kivri Kindling Phoenix into a stroke when I had a Domri, but it is what it is. Trust me, I have a plan. I mean, not strictly better through the breach, but it would be mostly better through the breach. Oh, oh, mmm, mmm. Little Tef result text got me. I was like, they don't block, I will Colossus them, but that's that's not how that works. I missed, I missed lethal, right? No, I didn't miss lethal. So I could have done this and then had this fight but then if i have this fight the domri goes away and i no longer am attacking for lethal right it would only be um 8 11 total this might be a bad idea how this thing goes yeah my general takeaway is that pig's not a very Tear good card at least not in these not in these not as a top end in these girl decks pig pig just to me genuinely doesn't feel like what these what these these girl decks want to be doing Hopefully they're dead to this collision colossus next turn regardless. I'll probably just like pre-combat make this trample and hope to punch them. No, I'm not finished with you. Not by a long shot. Mastodonk, thank you for the four month three sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, I don't think we're beating that. Yep. I'm sure we're gonna have some decks like this that hammer hammer our ladder rank a bit because I think they might be competitive at a glance, but we end up playing games with them and it's just like, nope, really, really not too particularly good. So I'm gonna play a couple more matches with this. Am I 
I don't I don't even know if I'm gonna play a couple more matches with this. I might just roll into that, roll into the next one. It really, it really doesn't feel like bow and pig belong in this archetype. Null Hide Ferox is like okay at certain points, but like bow i think if it belongs in here is like a sideboard card because it's really not aggressively slanted and this card's just not the top end these aggressive girl decks want because it's just not aggressive right like it's doing this like big over the top timmy type thing and it's not like when we're spending five mana for a card in this deck we really want it to be like sarkin or scargate hellkite we want we want something that's actually gonna like pressure our opponent a good deal I think I'm off of this one. It feels just like it feels like a bad a bad version of uh where is it? Green red, green red circuit. So this is uh this is a deck we played This is a deck we played um I mean unmotivated. Why was how is admitting a deck is bad unmotivated, right? Like why like so one of the things that you want to do when you're building and brewing decks is like don't make bad versions of something else and that's that's what it felt like I was doing there with that deck. It felt like we took a deck that was similar to what this deck is and we made it worse for the sake of adding Arcbo and um the pig. And I can't really envision matchups where those cards are going to make our deck better because like the matches where pig and Arcbo are going to be good are matches where this deck's already good, right? Like, Pig and Arc are going to be good against the control decks, and this deck, like, already stuffs control decks in a box. So, yeah. 